This is George Fishman for The Mosaic of Art. My guest today is artist Vanessa Summers. Besides her longtime residence in Rome, she has a second home and studio in Morocco, where her husband, Frederick Vreeland, was U.S. ambassador. She maintains an active studio practice in both places and also travels extensively to see mosaics, old and new, and to make presentations. She's joining me by phone from San Francisco, where the extraordinary Roman-era Lode pavement mosaic is on loan. Vanessa will present an illustrated talk and a demonstration at the Florence Gould Theater in the Legion of Honor. In a moment, we'll hear details about both. Vanessa has worked in both traditional and experimental styles, including laminations in plastic and glass. Following an apprenticeship in mosaic with the artistic director of the Vatican Mosaic Studio, she has adopted mosaics as a principal medium of expression during the past 20 years. We last spoke in the fall of 2010 when you were attending a mosaic conference in Greece. Welcome back, Vanessa. Thank you very much, George. It's a pleasure to be on your program. Vanessa, tell us what's so special about the Ludd Mosaic. Well, the Ludd Mosaic is really extraordinary. Firstly, because it's so perfect. Secondly, because the archaeologists did such a good job taking it out of the ground. And thirdly, because it's very harmonious uh, with the birds and the bees and the beasts and even two boats, one of which is slightly damaged. But otherwise, it's the largest mosaic I have ever seen, which is almost intact. The boats were uh, at the bottom end to show that these animals were being taken to various colosseums, arenas all around the Roman world. And uh, the animals are really fairly well depicted, except there is a giraffe that looks a little bit funny. Otherwise, the other animals are awfully well um, represented, I think. There's not as much blood and gore as there usually is in a Roman mosaic with animals. There are a few lepers uh, eating up uh, antelopes, but it's fairly restrained. Uh, you mentioned the color. Uh, it's, it's very harmonious. It's all marble, off-white background, and the animals are sort of depicted in reds and browns with the line of black around the outside. It's a lovely piece. I think everybody should come and see it. This one is definitely 4th century AD. The mosaic tessere are not as small as the Greeks used or cut, but it's nevertheless a very impressive work. What did you learn about how it was extracted from its original site in Israel? They put a sort of a gauze netting on the face of the mosaic with a, a glue which can wash off, a, quite a strong glue, but it will wash off in the end with water. And then they wrapped it around a great big long drum so that there were no cracking. It's, it's a fantastic process. And they showed a film of that. So it, it was essentially loosened and peeled from the ground with this uh, mesh and glue holding it together. Exactly. And as I said, the glue must be a water-based glue because in the end, when they bring it right side up again, uh, they would have to get rid of the sort of netting that was on the face of it. They, I, I usually break up the mosaic into sections so that I don't have to use a very large area turned over into cement at one time. You have brought a piece to San Francisco, which is a reinterpretation of an ancient uh, motif, which is called a saraton, ancient Greek for the unswept floor. It's about six foot wide by five foot high, and it's in eight sections. 
And uh, again, listeners can see an overall view and some details in a little gallery that's posted on mo the Mosaic of Art. To what degree is your piece faithful tr to tradition and in, in what ways is it uh, innovative? Well, I looked at the Roman copy in the Vatican Museum from 100 A.D. It's faithful to the tradition in that it uses the same type of marble and the same colors. There's a white background in the larger area where the bits of food are on the floor. And my mosaic uh, has the same color scheme and the same size of the tessery. But I've used all the things we use uh, today uh, when we have uh, a dinner. This is a dinner for two lovers. My mosaic doesn't show the two lovers. It shows some discarded champagne corks and shoes and cufflinks and things like that, which makes one think whatever one wants. I think the ancient Greeks, I never realized it before, but I think they had great senses of humor. So this mosaic shows it very, very clearly. What about the inner area with the arches and the cats? Is that an adaptation of the original, or did you make it up? That's entirely my invention. There was a little bit of the red Rosso di Verona in the original, and there was the black and they had a nilotic scene in that section. And I didn't want to do a nilotic scene. Instead of doing the goddess Isis, that is the figure in the Vatican uh, Museum mosaic, I decided I want to do the Venus de Milo. So that's what I did. And I thought, well, I'll do portraits of my cats, and to finish the mosaic off, I'll do and architectural arches or whatever with columns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it finishes it rather well, in fact. You are also going to be doing a demonstration. I can't in two hours create a mosaic. But what I can do is to show people how to use the hammer and hardy, and I will be doing something very easily recognizable. I'm only going to use marble. I'm not using any glass. And I, I think it's the right thing to do, considering that the Lod mosaic is there and considering that my mosaic is an interpretation of a very ancient mosaic, too. To know how those people so long ago uh, used the same hammer and hardy that we use today. And it hasn't changed in 2,000 years. And I even saw a tomb to a mosaic artist, and it, you could sort of vaguely see the outline of the hammer, and it did look exactly alike. Well, Vanessa, besides working in stone, you also utilize glass and plastic, and visitors to the glass section of your website, Vanessa Sommers, S-O-M-E-R-S dot com, will see a dozen or so examples. What's the interplay between your glass and your stone mosaics? Well, first of all, I treat them visually as the same. In other words, it's always the fairly small tessery composed with small spaces between. And uh, one is a fused glass mosaic. And although the glass is fused together, you can still see that whole andamento, that whole wonderful movement, which is so important to us mosaic artists. The process would be just to cut the glass up into very small pieces after you've made a picture, you know, an image that you really like, to stick it with just normal glue, uh, Elmer's glue or whatever, onto a glass support, a sheet of glass, and then to put it into a kiln, which you have to control the heat of, it fuses, and all the pieces stick together, and then to bring down the heat very slowly so the piece doesn't crack, it has to be evidently the type of glass that is compatible. That's a very important. And it's been a very exciting process. There certainly is a texture. There is a texture, but it's softened because of the heat. Sometimes I use 
pieces like that in the center of my more traditional mosaics. I did a whole series on orchids. This series has sections of fused glass for the center of the orchids. You've done a whole series of eyes in fused glass. Talk about those. What got you started? Probably, as an artist, Mm. to look in an eye. That is the most difficult thing to capture. And I started out like that. And then I've even been asked to do portraits of people's just an eye. And an eye, you can do it on a fairly small scale, and it can still be recognizable. And it's more interesting than a fish, I think. Well, your cats might be more interested in a fish, but what's next for you when you get back to Rome? What is next is a little bit of a rest. I've just finished four very, very big mosaics, which are half glass and half marble, and quite a lot of the glass is transparent with a cement background. So you sort of get a feeling of the transparency, but then the cement stops it. And these are one meter 70. It took me a year to do all four. And I think I want to go back to my eyes and fusing because I haven't really been doing it a lot because this commission just stopped me from doing anything else. Have a wonderful visit there in San Francisco. And thank you so much. Well, thank you, George, for being interested. Everybody is very welcome to come to the Legion of Honor Museum on Sunday, uh, the 22nd of May at 1 p.m. is when I'm going to be talking. And I'd love to meet you all, so please come. Great. Thanks again. Thank you very much, George.